I've just released a new BXTRS and it has a new brute force optimizer for tasking. It was inspired by the brute forcer from the Trackmania task tools. We have already been using this optimizer with other testers and had a lot of success. In this video I'll show you how to set it up. First you'll need the latest BunnyMod XT and BXTRS. On Windows put them in the same folder together with injector.exe. On Linux use the run hl.sh script from the BXTRS repository. Open the part of the task that you want to optimize in the task editor. By the way, if you want to learn about the task editor and Half-Life tasking, check out my Half-Life tasking introduction video linked in the description. The optimizer works best on short segments which have collisions or other complex movement. You want to start with a path that already navigates through the obstacles or is very close to it. Here I'm using a path straight from the KZ and the portal task. In your HL task script, add BXT task optimunit at the front of the task editor command line. When you play back the task, you will see a light blue line alongside the normal task editor path. The light blue line is the optimizer's prediction, and it should more or less match the task editor path. If the optimizer's prediction is wrong, you will need to use multi-game optimization, which I'll explain later in this video. We need to tell the optimizer what a goal is for this segment. Simple goals like minimize the X position or maximize the Y velocity can be set with console variables. I will now clip in the direction that I want the optimizer to go, and look at the origin hut. The X position is decreasing, so we want the optimizer to minimize the X position. So, I will set BXT task optim variable to pos.x and BXT task optim direction to minimize. By the way, BXT help will show you all other variables that you can optimize. Let's type BXT task optim start and see how much the optimizer can improve my handcrafted task. Oh no, something went wrong. The optimizer has instantly found an easy way to go further, but not in the way we want. The simplest way to fix this is to extend the starting path in such a way that the optimizer has to follow it to get an improvement. Replay the task and start the optimizer again. You can see that right away we're getting a sizable improvement to the handcrafted script. The dark teal line shows the path that the optimizer is trying, and all improvements are printed to the console. It usually takes the optimizer just a few seconds to converge. To get the result, write BXT task optim save. This will save the optimized script into BXTRS optimization best.hltest. We can copy paste from it directly into our test and play it back to see the result. The optimizer works by randomly changing frame bulk parameters like strafing angle and type, press buttons and frame count. If the result is better than the current best, it becomes the current best, and the brute force continues from there. In practice, this means that the optimizer works well when it can incrementally improve towards the goal. If the script needs many big changes at once to get an improvement, with no in-between, you won't have much success with the optimizer. The random nature also means that occasionally restarting the brute force might produce an overall better result. You may want to run the optimizer a few extra times after saving the optimized script, especially when the segment has very complex movement and collision. When looking for a very tight skip, another option to try is BXT task optim change single frames 1. This way, instead of frame bulks, the optimizer will randomly change individual frames. But keep in mind that it makes working with the optimized script very annoying, and usually doesn't produce much better results than the default frame bulk mode. When optimizing a long script, the prediction might go straight through solid entities. In this case, set BXT task optim simulation accuracy to 1. This will ensure the prediction collides with all entities on the map, at the cost of being much slower. Now let's talk about multi-game optimization. You will need to use it when you want to optimize a part of the task which interacts with entities, like this health booster. Instead of predicting the brute force script's path, BXTRS will play the script for real in another game instance. To use multi-game optimization, set BXT task optim multiple games to 1. Type BXT task optim reset to reinitialize the optimizer. The light blue line has disappeared. This is because now the optimizer wants to simulate the path in another game instance, but we haven't started any yet. Go ahead and start a few more Half-Life instances, the optimizer will pick them up automatically. One of them will give us the initial light blue path. Now type BXT task optim start. Other games will start running brute force attempts in the background. They will show up in our main client, just like with regular optimization. Since the brute force attempts run for real, all entity interactions will be correct, and the path itself will never desync, but the optimization process will run considerably slower. All optimizer features will work just fine with multiple games. Also, feel free to open or close extra games at any point. The optimizer won't break, and new clients will automatically join the optimization. Sometimes the games will seemingly freeze on loading the map. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but they unfreeze on their own after a few seconds. Next, let's talk about constraints. Remember when the optimizer went the wrong way on KZ Enter Portal? 
it's not always possible to fix it by simply extending the starting path. That's where constraints come in. They let you discard brute force attempts that violate an inequality condition. For example, you can discard all attempts that end with Y position above 1000, or all attempts that end with speed below 500. In our example, all brute force attempts that we're interested in should end at Y below 380, as you can see from the origin HUD. I will set BXT TASAP team constraint variable to pos.y, BXT TASAP team constraint type to less than, and BXT TASAP team constraint value to 380. After starting the optimizer, you can see that it no longer ends in the wrong room, because the constraint prevents it from doing so. While many optimization goals can be set using the console variables that I showed earlier, sometimes you need more flexibility. For example, you might need constraints on two variables at once, or a more complicated constraint like requiring the player to pass within the use range of a button. To accommodate this, the optimizer can be scripted to set an arbitrary goal and constraint in code. BXTRS uses the RI scripting language. RI is a scripting language with syntax reminiscent of that of Rust. It has comprehensive documentation, an online playground with examples, and a VS Code extension. Create a file named optim.ry in the Half-Life folder and set bxt task optim ry file to optim.ry. The script should define three functions, is valid, is better, and to string. The functions accept the last frame of a brute force attempt. Is valid works like a constraint and returns true if the attempt should be considered at all. Is better checks if the attempt is better than the current best attempt. To string returns the goal value as a string for printing the optimization progress to the console. This script defines the same optimization goal as we set with variables before. We want the Y position to be below 380, we are minimizing the X position by saying that attempts with lower X are better, and we are printing the X position to the console because that's what we are interested in. If we want to do the second constraint, say for the Z position, so that the optimizer doesn't try to go down into the toxic waste, we could use the AND operator, which requires that both conditions are true. You can chain multiple constraints this way. For more elaborate checks, it's also possible to operate on all simulated frames of the brute force attempt, rather than just the last one. To enable this, define a should pass all frames variable set to true. Now our functions will be called with arrays of frames, and we will need to fetch the last frame explicitly with the minus one array index, like in Python. This allows for more creativity in defining the optimization goal. For example, one of the skips in KZ Desolate 3 tasks required me to get a jump up to the maximum possible height. The apex of the jump is a few frames earlier than the last frame. Since the script receives all frames, I can use a loop to find the maximum height across the whole attempt. Another application was in the HL1 BHOP UC1 task. I was optimizing the final segment where you need to grab the gun. My isValid function looped through all frames to ensure that on at least one frame the player is in the gun pickup range. One disadvantage of receiving all frames at once is that it's slower than receiving just the last frame, so use it only if necessary. In summary, the optimizer is a very powerful and helpful testing tool. You can use it to find precise skips, speed up complex movement, and pretty much just run it on every short segment with collisions. Make sure that your starting script already achieves the goal or is very close to it. The speed of the brute force really matters, so use BXT TASAP Team Simulation Accuracy 0 whenever you can get away with it. Fall back to BXT TASAP Team Simulation Accuracy 1 if needed, and to multi-game optimization only if you must. For more control over the optimization goal, use a RI script. By default, it isn't any slower than using the console variables. Passing all frames allows for much more elaborate logic, but makes the process slower. If you're interested in gold source testing or have questions about the optimizer, feel free to message in the gold source test channel on the source runs Discord. See you next time!